gives us the ability to dig. Did he just pull that out of his mouth? Who was that? It's two. Two brothers in Kalamazoo living with rare autoimmune diseases have received the gift of a lifetime. I love it so much. Can't wait to get fish in there and train them. We don't know what the future holds. We take it day by day. We're blessed for each day that we have. And now we have this to look forward to. Woke up to it this morning. That sound is just so soothing. You guys ready? Yeah. Yes, Greg. I'm not doing the clap. Who wants to be able to pound? Hey guys, Chris Wilson with Team Aquascape here in Kalamazoo, Michigan with some of the top builders in the world. We're building a really cool project here for Ethan and Nolan. Greg Whitstock, the pond guy, had the privilege of meeting these two young gentlemen here that are diagnosed with a really complicated disease and we're here to make dreams come true. So follow me back there and let's take a look at what we got going on. on dude? How you doing buddy? Good, good, good to see you. Likewise, what do we got going on here? So 18 by 20 pond, 30 inches deep. Nolan is a fish guy, ecosystem guy. He is totally into this. We went a, it's a touch deeper for his fish. We're gonna do some fish caves in here. We've got big machine set boulders. We got the pond already excavated. And we got a little excavation to do on the stream. The bile falls is in. The plumbing is completely done. Skimmer box is attached to the line. We really have to just get the rock pad in here. Start moving rocks into the bottom of the pond and rocking it in. We're gonna be able to do nice destination stones along the edges. Big waterfalls up top and we got 7,000 gallons an hour flowing through the water. Awesome. Well, let's uh, quit the sailing around, get to work. Let's do it. Thanks, man. All right, so originally Greg came here, donated an 11 by 16 kit. We got a bigger kit. Now Greg's the pond guy, right? I don't know when the last time he's built a pond though. He put the pond over here and I wanted it to be more open so that they could see it from the house better and it could be bigger. We needed to make it a lot bigger. So instead of 11 by 16, we're now 18 by 20 with 20 feet of stream coming down that natural hill that was already there. It's gonna be a little bit different than what the pond guy designed. All these pond guys said it perfect. This is all about the details, baby. Back in the day, Greg, Ed, Brian, we're getting close to the middle of the day where we'd rock in the pond, we start filling it, and then we take 30 minutes to eat our lunch. But if you got a beautiful wood setting like this, it's not a bad idea to eat your sandwich walking through the woods. We used to pull out big logs and big pieces of driftwood. The great thing about driftwood is that it naturalizes everything around the last 10% that makes this pond pop. The problem with driftwood, if it doesn't stay wet, then it starts to break down. So we got here an Aquascape faux driftwood that's poly resin. It will stand the test of time, won't break down. Perfect for concealing hard to hide areas, such as this skimmer faceplate right here. We can sit this in different positions to be able to hide it. And what Brian here is doing is he's just gotta make sure it's at the perfect height to not interfere with the lid coming down over it, but also to rest it from underneath. So I'm looking forward to see how this turns out. Have we encountered an issue or a standstill? <laughs> What's going on here? So what we got going on is we're contemplating with water level is where Chris's yep, hand is at right there. As we're rocking in, you start envisioning where each frame rock is going to go for the waterfall. Here we can't dig back into the earth to get a little bit more liner to set it back a little bit. So we'll shift the waterfall just slightly over towards the machine. See all this slack liner? That gives us the ability to dig into the earth. Framer, framer, weird. Good work, fellas. Break! Hey. All right, guys, what do you think? 
we're at the halfway point. I would probably even say more than halfway. All the hard work is done. We dug, we lined, we rocked, we're washing, we're about to fill it up. What has been your favorite part? Probably the rock placement. You like the artistry and how yeah. it all fits together and goes together yeah, and I'm stuff? Really. Are you gonna get in and help a little bit maybe? I saw you earlier on the machine. What'd you think of that? It was fun. Yeah, how about you, Ethan? Honestly, my favorite part is how fast you guys did all of this. Like the amount of work you guys had to do to get it done this quick normally groups are disorganized because there's so many people nobody knows what to do and the fact that you guys broke off into your own different groups your own little team you did it perfectly and you did it fast that's a very mature observation that you just gave there buddy our tribe of all of our certified aquascape contractors we're prideful but we're teammates first we're built on a foundation of being tribal brothers almost mm -hmm. and sisters to where we help one another to get to the end goal. We all have an end goal here to build you guys an awesome, awesome water feature. Yeah. So we get out of our own way right. and we, we help with the creativeness. What you just said, mm -hmm. dude, <laughs> it, just, it just hit it on the mark right there. So that's a very, very good observation. Can we do fire back here? Oh yeah. Like yeah. a fire pit and mm -hmm. stuff like yeah. that yes. too to kind of relax. She got some great Adirondack chairs here. Mm -hmm. We'll put up a, a fire pit you know out here and then you just gonna hang out day and night so there's steps down there hand holds for you to get down carefully big boulders this is meant to interact with this is not meant to be delicate or no one touch it like yeah. interact with it engage with it come on why don't you come over this side yeah follow the hose that he's moving there you'll see some flat stones there for you to be able to get down in hold on to that big rock by your knee you got it yep you got another step there. This is all a lily pad shelf here for lily pads. We got a cave right under here that goes all the way back around in there so the fish can hide out all winter long. Don't be scared if they do hide out all winter long and you don't see them, just know they're there. The look of this will all completely change once the water level comes up. Now you guys kind of exploring, knowing where the rocks are right now, it's gonna be crystal clear, yeah. like a fresh mountain spring. Knowing where things are, where you can interact and stuff is gonna be pretty right. awesome. So this pond is gonna go through a lot of changes. When we were late in the season this year, so four to six weeks puts us almost at the end of the season. Bacteria is gonna go in our mixing bowl, our skimmer here. It's gonna go up into the filter up on top. It's gonna colonize in there and on the surface of all these rocks and gravel here. So it makes it like one big filter. It's not the same for everybody. Think of this as building its immune system. Mother nature knows what she's doing. So when or if it turns green, let it run its course because mother nature is okay, figuring out how to out. fight it. Okay. Once she fights it, Guess what happens when it wants to turn green again? She's in it, it's like a common cold. She beats it before it even comes about. So don't panic at first. It's typical because we don't have plants growing yet. We don't have bacteria growing yet. But after that, you're smooth sailing. And every year, like a fine wine, it just gets better and better and better. Just like Dan just said, it evolves from year to year to year. And that's the amazing part about this. Yeah, I'm just speechless because this is gonna be such an amazing healing place for all of us our family, our, our neighbors, um, people to come in a safe environment that's not exposing them to germs so mm -hmm. they're safe and we get to see people and enjoy this master work of mm -hmm. art. We are so blessed and thankful. We yeah. just really can't say thank you enough to know that your love and passion and talents is in each one of these rocks that are placed. We will never, never forget. Alright, so let me give you a little recap of where we're at. You can see the pond is mostly done. And now we're gonna start getting into the waterfall. As you can see, we have our biological filter, Biofall 6000 right here. We're gonna do a one drop off of big waterfalls converging into an upper pool. Just gonna meander and come down into the stream. We're gonna overlap our liner right here. We'll excavate this out a little bit and we'll do a second drop into there. Originally, we had the waterfall kind of winding around down there. But well, we got a little bit too close to the edge over there for an overlap and to avoid any seaming in here, we decided to alter it. That's the beautiful thing to have creative freedom on site. We can change whatever we want coming into it. And the design is actually gonna work out better for the back of the house and for the kids pad back here. Ah, check it out.
we're gonna take some boulders and we're gonna do a wall. The kids can sit down on it. Oh, cool. And then we'll dig out a pit. We'll put some gravel down at the bottom. And then we'll ring the pit with some nice stones. I have a safe marshmallow that they can actually roast. Because they can't eat, they have lines. They get fed through their bloodstream. And they can roast it and eat that. They'll be like thrilled. We can take some of that soil and go right up to the base of the door. Okay. So that way we can create a nice flow through area. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I'm, I'm, thank you. Right. So, Mike, we raised up the grade here. What I'm thinking is, if we can make a knee wall so the kids can sit on, get rid of all this dirt here. How should that wall really go around? What are your thoughts on that? You don't want to block the waterfall in the stream and just match it up in line with that. In line with that. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. I think that if we want the retaining wall here to separate the fire pit from the landscape, we'll put the boulders around and it parallel with the biofalls so we don't obstruct the view of the waterfall. Then we'll have the fire pit here and that might work out. I want the kids to be able to A, enjoy the fire because they can't just roast marshmallows like you and I could. They got to get special marshmallows to do that. I want them to be able to sit, enjoy a campfire like anybody else could, but I want them to be able to enjoy the waterfalls at the same time. So I think your idea of coming off that corner and tying it into the the framing rock there, I think that would be perfect. Yeah, let's do it. Let's try it out. Michael, I'm sorry, buddy. Michael was collateral damage. I saw you digging yesterday, so I saw the, the construction starting, right? This is a big pond. Damn, you guys got edges done. Oh, you're wrapping stuff up. Nice to meet you as well. Noah's got questions for you. Oh, cool. What other fish could live? Oh my gosh, there's all types of fish. Some of my favorites are like the little golden orf. The rosy reds are good if you're looking for schooling fish. Golden orfs are top feeding. They kind of look like small trout. They're really fast. They school together really well, so they'll do they'll do great as well as any other type of native fish would do good, really good too. What else you got on there? What temperature do you stop feeding them? Typically 50 degrees. You don't want to feed the fish once it gets down below 50 degrees. Usually around here, it's going to be right after uh, right after Halloween it's because it'll stress the fish out. They can't digest it properly check that one off <laughs> when do you use the pond detoxifier in eco -blast? the pond detoxifier we should start using right away and that's because you have brand new water going into the pond anytime you also do like a big water change like in springtime or something like that if you're changing out a lot of water and you're bringing in a bunch of city water it needs to be it needs to age a little bit so the detoxifier will help to neutralize a lot of that stuff and make the water better for your fish as well as all the other inhabitant inhabitants inside of here ecoblast yeah, that's a good question so i like algae so ecoblast it really kills algae but um, algae is kind of a critical component yeah. of the ecosystem the fish are going to nibble on it it produces oxygen it helps it helps with the biological filtration so i only use it as a spot treatment when i start to see the algae getting really long and out of control but it's more for taste Usually where you're going to start seeing it is up in your waterfalls and things like that. It might start growing and hanging down into the water. You could treat some of that material. What I'll do is instead of treating it, I'll come in and I'll just physically remove it. And then what you could do is you can just put it into the garden and things like that. So it's a great form of fertilizer. That's all my questions. Awesome. Thank well, you. that was easy. So one of the Chris is going to teach you guys how to foam the waterfall. You have to foam the waterfall. That's like in, like an important part. You got to get in there and you have to seal it up. And that's, gonna, that's critical because it makes the water flow over everything yeah, the sure. right way. Waterfall foam. This this is a pond builder's best friend right here. So you cannot view anything without this stuff. When we have water coming over, this will, this will be filled with river rocks, right? But what would happen if we didn't foam this waterfall in, all the water would just disappear between all these little cracks and crevices. It's sealed up tight, but it's not watertight. We're gonna dispense this stuff out right in this little joint right over here, and it will expand out and it will solidify and it will force the water to go over the top of the rock. Like I said, it's an important piece because without doing this, you're not gonna have any sound. So what you wanna do is you wanna force all the water right over the front of that rock and that's gonna create the sound of the waterfall. So what you wanna do is you just gently put it right between the rocks and you wanna shoot it out right in between there and you see it's stuff yeah. starting to come out. What we wanna do is we wanna fill this entire joint and some of the points that are really critical is you want to think about where water is going to go. So like right now, I just went over this little fold, but water will sneak its way right in between. So you want to get that as well. 
and just kind of work your way all the way around. And then what we'll do is we're gonna go all the way through here. Water's gonna to wanna to get around all of this stuff. This is one of the most important jobs. That stuff is really, really gooey right now. So what we're gonna do, take this, and we'll just kind of put it right on top of that. It'll keep it from getting people stepping on it and it makes it stronger. So what happens is this stuff actually expands to fill those joints up a little bit. What this will do is it'll kind of keep it from expanding up too high. Now what we want to do, figure out where that water is going to go. You see this joint right here? We're going to have to get some foam in that. And we're also going to have to get it right back in here because water's going to, again, water's tricky. It'll find its way through anything. So what I think we're going to do is we'll try to get some all the way underneath this rock. All right. You want to see the pond across the street where all this started? Oh, absolutely. All right, let's go over there. Let's do it. I'm over here. We're working on this. Nolan comes and helps the stifflers take care of their pond. He loves to come over here and catch frog, look at the fish. The kid is just totally into nice. ecosystems. Ecosystems are his thing. So he's telling me about this, and I'm like, you know about ecosystems? And he goes, yeah, you guys are <laughs> switching this over to an aquascapes ecosystem, right? <laughs> oh, my word. I'm like, you know aquascapes? He says, yeah. I know all of the pond guy's videos. I've watched every single one. I didn't know wow. anybody watched all of his videos. <laughs> <laughs> he knows Greg from the videos and Greg's coming in two weeks. So I said, you want to meet him? Cool. Greg came over, he got to meet Greg and then, and then Aquascapes donated a kit. So then that's how we ended up over there with that's the boys. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Team Aquascape is super proud to be a part of this moment for you boys. Every single day I feel grateful. I think we all feel grateful that we're a part of this and you can really show us a lot of things that aren't possible are made possible. Congrats to you guys. I really appreciate allowing us to 